Hi, this week I experimented with adding VR legs to my game. It was quite a process and there's plenty to talk about, including a special announcement near the end, so stick around for that one. And there's of course the big question, will I keep these legs or will I scrap them after this week ends? Well, that and much more in the second devlog of... Alright, before we get started, let me thank all of you for the overwhelming support so far. Our post on X got a whopping 7k views and a huge like ratio, and one of my Reddit posts, 24,000 views. What? Seeing my passion project reach so many people, it's been motivating, to say the very least. And also a huge shout out to all the people that joined the Discord. We are gathering quite the crew, and we still have a couple of spots open for the first round of playtests, so... If you want to have a chance at playtesting, all you need to do is hit this little button over here and you're in. Go, do it right now. The link's down below. It's free, I will wait. Got it? Alright, let's then finally get into the topic of this video. In the latest update, we did what even Meta themselves could not. Lex. Yeah, these bad boys over here. Wait. They do have legs now at meta? Oh, wait, go back, go back, go back, go back. <sighs> okay, maybe I should reconsider this. So, how did I add animated legs without any sort of leg tracking? Well, one keyword today is contextual animation. Normally, you would program something like, if the jump button is pressed, then do the jump animation. However, Rama for Robots barely uses buttons and instead relies on motion controls. So, how do we do it then? We have to first determine what defines the specific action. For example, swinging your arm. We could check if your controller is going backwards, has enough speed, and has a long enough motion. If that's the case, then we can safely say, go ahead and play the animation. One important thing is that all the motion controls in Rama for Robots are designed to not overlap with each other. Otherwise, you might accidentally speed up while you were trying to brake. Let's just say there was a lot of trial and error involved. But it was worded in the end, as I always felt buttons quite immersion breaking. So that's the general ID. The next step will be to make the model and the animations. Now, this was my first time doing something like this, and also in this art style. But I decided to just trust in the process and see where I end up. I decided to start off with the most iconic part, skates. I often start my design process scrolling through Pinterest for a bit of inspiration, just to realize it's now an hour later. And oops, well, at least now I get a bunch of inspiration. And the images I save are not exactly in the JSR style. Hmm. But I save them anyway, because I feel like they have elements in them that I think are inspiring and can be used for the skates I want to design. I then encircle these elements and label them. These are basically all the building blocks that will shape the model. And in terms of the vibe I'm going for, it will be quite different from the arms model we have. While the arms look pretty good, they also give off a very generic vibe. I think something like the art of Jay over at Twitter is more in the direction of what I think is interesting. Seriously, this guy makes some awesome art. He has a ton more of this stuff on his profile, so go follow him right now. With a concept now in place, I can finally start modeling. The program I use for this is called Blockbench, and while it's clearly very Minecraft modding focused, it also has one great feature, being able to paint directly on your model. On top of that, I just love the simplicity of the user interface, which is very fitting for making simple low poly models. I don't need the massive amount of features Blender has. After all, we are making a JSR installed game and not the next big AAA graphics that require your NSA supercomputer to run. I think that guy needed more RAM. So this is the part where I should show a time lapse with some funky music, right? Oh, I can see them run by the town. I can hear them all say. Yes. Not bad. I don't think they're 
And there we go. I think it looks pretty good for a first try. By the way, it's truly an art to create a lot of character with such a low amount of polys and pixels. For example, there is no real-time light source at all. All the shading you see is hand-painted. What's also nice is that this model has a very low amount of polys, and I bet you could go even way lower. In terms of textures, it's just one small 6 kilobytes fall. Sure beats having to download 100 gigabytes of textures in some games. Anyway, my goal was to make a model from start to finish, learn along the way, and not to be a professional in just one week. And we definitely did that. <laughs> and I learned a lot I can apply next time, like making an actual proper picture sheet. So all that's left now is to get these legs to do actual leg things. For that we need animations and some code. For the animations, I looked at some references and then just tried my best animating within Unity. After that, I started work on making an animation state machine to change the animation of the legs depending on specific states, like swinging your arms or breaking. I have one state machine script that manages and changes the states of the player, and one animation state machine script that uses those states to play certain animations. And by setting up the animations like so in Unity, I can smoothly transition from one animation to another. Alright, let's give it a test. And... everything works! First try, baby! Okay, well, maybe not first try, but at least it works. Sorta. But when it does work, it feels like I'm an actual skater now that's physically present in the world, and not just two disconnected floating arms. There is just one slight problem. I don't think anyone is going to play the game like this. Because the moment you play normally, the legs might as well not be there. This is further amplified by the low field of view of VR headsets, and the fact that you just have to look forward to see what kind of obstacles are coming next. Sure, there are some moments like rail grinding that allow you to actually look at it, and while it does look pretty cool in that moment, that's pretty much the only moment I feel is relevant, which is a shame. And that's why I decided to scrap it for now. I want to get this game in your hands as soon as possible, and for that I have to be really laser focused on what I work on. And it could still be a possibility in the future, for sure, but for now it's way more important to work on level design, a game feel, and updating the art model. Because, you know, you do see that model all the time, unlike the legs. But I don't think this was a week wasted at all. We learned a bunch of things and I want to use this project to experiment and grow as a game developer. And I really want to push VR forward. That means trying out things that might not work out. But I do want to take that risk. I think a lot of the game industry is really stagnant right now. Especially the VR industry. I think VR has a lot more to offer than we have on display so far. So that about wraps up this second devlog. And this video was quite a bit easier to make than the last one. I learned quite a bit last time and I could improve this video because of that. I hope you can see some of those improvements. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. A special announcement. I now have another way for all of you to show your support. It's through a platform called Ko-Fi. Coffee? ko -fi? Anyway, I don't know. It's like Patreon, but better. For both me as a creator and you as a supporter. The donation thing can be, you know, once, or you can send it to monthly. So you have full control over how much money you use to support me. At a later date, I will also add special perks depending on how much you've donated so far. Uh, like being able to design your own NPC to be added to the game. You can see them walking on the streets. Hopefully looking a bit better than this placeholder NPC. 
Or maybe add your own original music to the mixtapes of the game, boosting your exposure. The possibilities are endless, and I would love to hear some of your suggestions. Anyway, join our hideout over at the Discord. Link down below. We still have a couple of spots left for the first rounds of playtesting, so don't wait too long. Follow my ex for some exclusive teasers, and make sure to subscribe and ring that bell. Ugh. Was that everything on the list? I wonder if I'll tired saying that every single video. Well, anyway, I'm going back to work. See you all next time.